If, in fact, I could solve all these problems without passing laws in Congress, then I would do so. But we're also a nation of laws. That's part of our tradition. And so the easy way out is to try to yell and pretend like I can do something by violating our laws. And what I'm proposing is the harder path, which is to use our democratic processes to achieve the same goal that you want to achieve. But it won't be as easy as just shouting. It requires us lobbying and getting it done. Well, that was President Obama back in November 2013 in San Francisco after an immigration activist interrupted his event there, talking about what he should do on his own without Congress, and that was his response. Well, now all the talk in Washington and at the White House is what he is potentially going to do on his own. Let's bring in our panel. Syndicated columnist George Will, Julie Pace, White House correspondent for the Associated Press, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Julie, is there a sense at the White House that this is kind of inev inevitable? Yeah, it, it is inevitable. I think the question still remains what will be the scope of it, but I think there's no doubt that there's going to be some type of action later this summer, perhaps even before Congress gets back from their recess, where the president will announce executive actions that presumably will allow some number of people who are in the United States illegally now to stay here. George, thoughts on that? Well, during the Watergate unpleasantness 40 years ago, Henry Kissinger said with his mordant wit of the Nixon White House, the illegal we can do immediately, the unconstitutional takes a little longer. They can do this immediately, I guess, but what is it? What's the antecedent of the pronoun? It is very clear that s determining the status of people within our borders is an Article I power, that is the power of Congress. Ed Henry reported a moment ago that the White House is considering delaying efforts to deport up to five million people. There are no efforts to deport up to five million people, none. Eighty-five percent of the 12 million people have been here five years or more. Sixty percent have been here 10 years or more. Forty-five percent own homes. They're woven into the fabric of our community. No one is proposing the police measures necessary, and no one would tolerate the police measures necessary to extract those people from our community. I don't know what they're talking about. Charles. Well, they're talking about going from de facto legalization to de jure. That's a big deal. If you have 11 million people who get a green card, that's different from the status where they are now. And the difference is, perhaps not in the lives of these 11 million, but on the effect it'll have on the next 11 million who are waiting in Central America and Mexico for a signal. Now we know what signals and how they're received in Central America. President signals that if you, if you come here as a child, you're going to be allowed to stay with the DREAM Act, which he uh, uh, enacted unilaterally, illegal, and constitutionally on his own. I'm not against it in substance, but it is clear that the, the signal was sent to Central America, send your kids, eventually they will be legalized. So it makes a difference. And I think if you're going to do the step of legalizing these 11 million, which I would do, that has to come after you have secured the border, there are a lot of ways to do it. I think there's a simple way to do it, to start to do it with a fence. There is a fence around the White House, after all, and it works. Uh, and if you convince Americans that this is the last 11 million, they will legalize. And then you won't be sending a signal to the next 11 million. Take a listen to Senators Thune and Menen Menendez this weekend about the action in the House. The House did pass a border security uh, bill before they went out. The Senate has not. You can't address that situation if you don't vote. In the United States Senate, we went for an entire year where we cast less than one vote on a Republican amendment per month. The Senate spoke uh, last year with an overwhelmingly bipartisan, we talk about uh, gridlock, 68 votes, Republicans and Democrats, the Gang of Eight, of which I was part of, put together a broad, bipartisan, comprehensive immigration reform to fix our immigration system. Now, that stalled in the House of Representatives, and they haven't even permitted one vote uh, on it. In light of that, then it seems to me that the president, which my Republican friends often call upon to act, uh, in this case, is uh, I hope will act because the system as it exists today is broken. So, Julie, it's all about the votes not taken. Uh, the Senate didn't actually vote on anything before leaving town. The House obviously didn't take up the comprehensive immigration reform bill. 
Yeah, I mean, what you heard Senator Thune say there is the real reason why the House stayed in session last Friday, because Republicans wanted to be able to go home during this recess period and say, we acted on the border issue, and it's the Senate Democrats that did not. Honestly, though, neither chamber is really acting on anything here. I mean, we've had a vote in the Senate on a comprehensive bill and no votes in the House on it. We've had a vote in the House on the border issue and no votes in the Senate on it. So, I mean, both sides bear responsibility for what we're seeing on immigration right now. George, what about the impact in the election in November and what immigration as an issue could potentially do? If you take a look at uh, the eligible Hispanic voters in three big states, uh, Colorado, it's the highest out of any potential Republican pickup at 15 percent. Uh, North Carolina, 4 percent. Kentucky, 2 percent. Uh, most of the states are, are below 5 percent. And, and immigration is not that high on the issue list. On the other hand, in those three states, it would be surprising, at least to me, if the winner wins by more than two points. So this is a small margin, but a marginal difference can make all the difference there. Charles? No, I think that's right. In, in close elections, it will make a difference. But I'm not sure that the constituencies are going to be swayed by the vote that the House took or that the President took. After all, what he won the Hispanic vote over Romney by about at least 40 points. And when you compare it to, to George Bush, W. Bush, who won almost half of the Hispanic vote, that's a real change. But if I could say one word on substance, I think this is a bogus argument, President saying, the Republicans haven't acted, so I have to act, so I'm going to legalize a million people. A, it's a non sequitur. It's got nothing at all to do with the crisis on which allegedly the Republicans haven't acted. Second, the Republicans have acted. That's a real bill. And it incorporates exactly what the president himself had said he wanted to do, change the 08 law and provide the money to help the kids who are already here. He has the, the, the two elements that everybody had originally agreed had to be done for the crisis until Obama had a meeting with his left and caved in. So it is an action. And it is one that would have a very real impact on the crisis. And it's the Democrats in the Senate who did nothing. But it also overturns his dreamers' executive order, the piece of legislation that they passed through the House. It would, what it, look, if the Senate wanted to take it up and accept it element one and two, the uh, changing of the 08 law and the provision of money for the kids, Fix it in conference. and left th that out, of, it would pass for sure. Down the road. Executive order by the end of the summer? Yes, but as Julie says, we don't know how how appalling the scope will be, how constitutional. I don't think that's a quote. <laughs> <laughs> how constitutionally appalling. Uh, if but I you say yes. End of, end of the summer. He's up on tiptoe as he has to kiss somebody. <laughs> Next up, terrorists make gains in Iraq, so what will the U.S. do?